homes and new floors. Did we share the time and place? I hang out with the same guy. Remember the fan base? Yeah, I used to work there. The shop downtown. I was a clerk peddling nerve fair. Okay, how'd you come up with the concept for the spinner rack? Uh, I lived it. I found a spinner rack as a kid in a corner store and got addicted to comic books really, really early on. And during the pandemic, I was sorting through my comic book collection, you know, digging through those boxes, sorting my records and my CDs and my comic books. And I, I found these old comics, some of the oldest ones I had. And I could remember, you know, I had like, like the Spider-Man annual and I remembered getting it on a spinner rack and like picking it up and looking at it. I could like flipping through the pages and I was transported back to, you know, 1988 looking at a spinner rack and like my cousin buying me comic books. Cause he was like, you gotta have this one. You gotta get, you know, I was like, Oh, okay, cool. And like my older cousin and, um, and just that magic, you know, and I was thinking like the spinner rack, it was almost like, you know, it was cooler, but it was like the internet for little for kids back then because you were like instantly had access to this whole other world of stories and images and even like the crazy ads in the back or you know everything so and i've had a lifetime love of comics ever since you know i say in the song like i taught myself to read from comics and uh you know comics and just my love of comics and it's you know it's never been a secret in any of my music that uh i'm a comic book fan um so it just it just really started writing itself and then having um you know i've ha i've worked in comic shops as a, as a like just as a retail job so i had a lot of experience from that uh from that time in my life and i loved it and uh yeah i just had so much fun ex exploring it and uh, and I never heard a song about a spinner rack either. I was like, you know what? Let's give it up for the spinner rack. You know, people are celebrating all these other things. You know, why don't you want about a spinner rack? That that Andre guy just put out an album about a flute. I'm gonna do one about a spinner rack. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm guessing people listening know what a spinner rack is, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. So. How did you initially get into comics though? You were just walking in and saw it and or was it your yeah. cousin that kind of hipped you to Yeah. It? Yeah. So I, you know, my older cousin was into like he was into G.I. Joe's, he was into music, he was into comic books. And so he I I guess the first time he probably was the first one who introduced me to comic books, and he had some. And then I would go and like spend a lot of time in the summers, like hanging at his place. And we just walked to this corner store and, you know, he was a bit older. He had some money. Comic books back then were like 75 cents. So it was like, yo, yeah, yeah, I can buy you a comic book. And I thought that was like the greatest thing ever. Right. And uh, I can clearly remember going through comics too, like on the rack. He's like, no, you don't want that one. Don't want that. He didn't like DC for some reason. He was like, you got to get Marvel. <laughs> It's like get get Spider Man, get Daredevil, get GI Joe, get all that stuff. So, yeah, and uh, and yeah, those spinner racks. Every corner store you went to would be a different assortment of comics. And for anybody reading comics, you understand like if you're collecting Spider Man, you know they come out every month or sometimes in the summer they they come out like a few times a month, and you would like if you go from one store to another, they might not have the same consecutive issues so it would get really confusing you pick up oh yo i got spider-man issue 280 and then you go to the next place and they got issue 250 from like a year or two ago that just been sitting there collecting dust and like trying to figure out how those stories made sense uh it was a really confusing way to read, <laughs> to read but it's certainly like I think drove me to go and hunt down those comics as I got older. And, you know, when you discover comic shops or places, you can find older back issues of these things and like fill in the gaps. Like, Oh, now I understand. Like, you know, what happened next? You know? Cause again, it's like, just use that whole, like before the internet metaphor that we've all heard a hundred times. It really was like, if you missed the next issue on the spinner rack, you didn't know, 
whatever happened to spider-man or wolverine or whoever it's like well I, how did this end i don't know so it was it was this strange they really fueled an, a, this addiction um but I, I loved it, you know, and the artwork and the and the writing, and uh, definitely like those co- early comics inspired a love of like words and and just strange vocabulary and stuff like that, you know, and uh, which of course you know was you know part of the big reason I think I was attracted to rap so young too. It was just like all the words and the wordplay and the rhyming. Like, how are they, how are they putting all these words together? What is that? How does it rhyme? Like, it was just like this impossible puzzle of like, I don't even know how they're doing this. I just love it. It was like, you know, looking at the comics, it's the same thing. Like, how can they draw this good? How do they know, you know, what happens? Like, you think these are real stories too in the comics too. Like, I, I don't even know if I processed that someone was making up these Spider-Man stories every month that I was just like, no, this is like what's happening. This is Spider-Man. This is real. <laughs> I was an impressionable youth, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we all were. Yeah. Um, your new video, 1984 is just crazy. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, how did man. you get the, Get the 1980s VHS look to it. But just who are they? There's only one way to find out. By the 1984, a multi skilled elite unit of super agents fighting for peace. Obliterating evil isn't the game. Everybody's gotta have a rad code name like Quick Wit. She makes quips and jokes, keeping morale high while kicking in foes. Strike Zone, the baseball themed guy. His pitching machine guns making him cry. Wanna know why? Grenade balls is tough. He's a leading expert in blowing up stuff. Sneaky pants, you won't hear him stepping. Throwing surprise parties with silent weapons. You like people? Wildlife was one till he got abandoned. At the age of one, left alone as a baby, raised at a zoo. Now he talks to animals like talking to you. 1984, so I know it's hard to remember. All 1980 members. That's why you have to go and collect them all. Tell your parents they can buy them at the mall now. Uh, that's a uh, uh, shout out my friend Cameron who did the editing. He worked all this video magic and did. You know, I mean, we shot it in like we looked at old 80s TV commercials and because the video is it's like a parody or satire of those old 80s toy commercials that, you know, we were totally bombarded with as kids again, like you have to go buy this now, like stressing you out. You got to go like yell at your mom. Mom, I need to go. I need to buy this now. <laughs> um Creating that whole video, the whole from the set design and and the way we shot it, we looked at like those low budget, like they were high budget back then, but by today's standards, the sets and stuff look kind of low budget for those ads. So we we just created that on on the day of the the shoot. And huge props to our director Sandy Jobin Bevins, who helped. Uh, who, who like really brought this thing to life and like helped create that vibe, that eighties vibe. And then Cameron Wiley, who did the editing added in all that awesome VHS effect. And, uh, you know, I'd like to say that, Oh, we actually shot it on a videotape, but <laughs> it was, uh, it's the magic of the magic of editing and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we worked pretty hard to create a good eighties vibe for that video and it was just yeah too much fun just we we kind of went crazy yeah i could tell <laughs> <laughs> you got a few references i mean i think yeah, yeah. you know you're a wrestling guy too right yeah 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 you know you're yeah, yeah. yeah so we were a little yeah. bit of ultimate warrior homage in there um yeah yeah definitely cool. yeah it was like kind of like it's funny like the day of shooting it was like, yeah, it was kind of like Ultimate Warrior meets like Marty Jannetty or something. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> like it was like it was not quite Warrior, and there was inspiration there from like Sergeant Slaughter from the old GI Joe, who was a wrestler. But I didn't want to go, and it was like too easy, to like spoof a Sergeant Slaughter. I didn't want to do that, and um, I was also thinking of like the Micro Machines. Do you remember those? commercials mm-hmm. yeah. the guy who like talks so fast and any of those things like there was always some celebrity there 
selling toys to kids. Like G.I. Joe, there was like the Fridge, who was a wrestler. You remember Refrigerator Perry? Who's a football player? The football player. Yeah, what I say? Yeah, wrestler. Yeah, wrestler. He wrestled football. one time. Yeah. Oh, he did wrestle. Yeah. Once. Okay. WrestleMania two. Yeah. In Chicago, he wrestled, but yeah, he was a. Uh... He played offense and defense for the 85 Chicago Bears. They won a Super Bowl. Yeah. That's William right. Perry. You would know, right? Chicago. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes, I would know. Important part of my life. We have not won a Super Bowl since. Uh, 85 Bears, man. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Do you I have a fridge figure? You need no, to get the fridge. I don't, I, don't, I don't have any. I don't collect anything like that. No. But I don't remember him. I'm not surprised he was doing commercials, but I don't remember him. In any toy commercials. Yeah, he was. They actually made a G.I. Joe of the fridge. Oh, man. If I see it somewhere, I'm going to have to get it and send it to you. They made like a G.I. Joe. You had to send away for him. You'd have to collect the the points on the back of the, the G.I. Joe packages wow. and send them in and get a fridge. I think it was like it was a good deal if you could like clip those points you know, looking in garbages, trying to see, did anybody throw out some GI Joe packages? I can clip some extra points. <laughs> Cause then it was like, you just have to pay for the postage and you get this free figure. So yeah, the fridge. Dude. And I wonder why they made him a GI Joe. It seems like a strange I choice. <laughs> I think he was hot, man. He was a big star back then. I mean, they put him on WrestleMania. Like he, yeah. he was, a, he was a big star. He was everywhere. Yeah, uh, he was a charismatic guy. He wasn't the best player on that team, but he was a, you know, lovable guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what were some of your favorite memories of watching Saturday morning cartoons? Uh, you know, it's funny. The ads, in a lot of ways, like I would get as excited for the cartoons as I would like for the ads to see what was like coming up. And I would always like look at those kids in the ads and be like, Oh man, they've got the best life. Look, they've got all those new transformers. How <laughs> Those kids get all those hot wheels. I'm like, what? You know, you don't, you don't, again, you don't think as a kid, you're just like, you're programmed with this, you know, and that's a whole other thing. We talk about how kids like marketing to kids and all that stuff. But back then the eighties, it was, it was free for all. Um, I, yeah, I would love watching the cartoons. I liked Spider Man. I liked, um, oh, well, GI Joe, Transformers, all that stuff. Like the superheroes, cartoons, Ninja Turtles, whatever was on. And it was what was crazy again too about that was you'd see it once and you'd think, oh, I'm never going to see this again. You know, now I know. You know, with kids you can just put on netflix and like oh, i can watch this same episode 20 times if i want no if you just if ninja turtles came on and you you caught it and then it was gone like you may never see that again or you missed it and then kids would have to like tell you about it at the playground like no i'm telling you this really happened this alien brain guy <laughs> showed up and then there was this fly man and blah, 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 blah. Like, what i can't believe i missed it my mom made me go play outside <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Dude. good it's good good memories good creative storytelling and uh you know turtles was funny i remember thinking turtles was a funny cartoon i remember like laughing at that show ninja yeah. teenage mutant ninja yeah, turtles you've I'm, probably I'm, heard of them I've, I've, yeah i think i've heard of them <laughs> uh you know i've never seen it it's a little bit um I'm a little bit older than you. So my era was Transformers, uh, Masters of the Universe. I was yeah. into. Yeah, He Man. Uh, yeah. yeah, He Man. I, I wasn't never, I was never into G.I. Joe, but that was around the, when I was a kid. Um, I'm trying to think of, I was really into Star Wars, yeah, the Star nice. Wars action figures. Yeah, but at some point, like, you know, I completely just stopped watching when girls came into play. I was like, I can't, I can't watch <laughs> cartoons anymore. Um, yeah, I, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. I used to watch. I used to watch okay. that. Was, yeah, sure, sure. That was like must watch TV on Saturdays for me. But um, once I, you know, puberty I got into girls, I stopped watching cartoons. So I don't remember when Ninja Turtles came out. Was that eighties or nineties? 
it would be late eighties. So I think okay. turtles, someone's probably going to correct me, but I, I think it was like 88 or 89. Okay. That was about the time. <laughs> that was about yeah. the time I was done with cartoons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. And, and GI they, Joe kept going into the nineties. Like GI Joe ran a long time. Like looking back at that stuff, it's like, wow, some of those shows lasted. Like they changed the GI Joe cartoons had a quality change because another company started making them. Mm -hmm. And then they like the voice acting and the writing and everything just like went downhill. Uh, when you, and even as a kid, I could tell them like, why is this different? Why do these guys have different voices? Why is he, mm -hmm. you know, the, the drawings are different. Like the sound, everything was like weird, but, um, but yeah, turtles ran a long time. I remember too, but, and you, you know, you, I'd miss, you'd miss some episodes and you'd come back. And, uh, it's funny. Some of that stuff now I'll try and rewatch. Like if I'm just like, if it's like late at night, just flipping around and something's on. It's like, oh yeah, let me, let me check in to see if these are still good. Some of them are still good. Some of them are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Is rock and roll wrestling still good? Like I remember catching an episode of that or two. I, have never, I haven't seen it since I was a little kid. I have yeah. no idea. No idea. I don't even know if you could see that anywhere. Didn't they made like Rowdy Roddy Piper was the bad guy, right? Was he yeah. like the the yeah? He was like the main heel. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who else would have been on that? Like Million Dollar Man and Macho no, Man and stuff. No, 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 that was before them. Uh, ooh, Andre the Giant. Uh, yeah. Maybe Jimmy Snuka, Iron Sheik, and Nikolai Volkov. Maybe Mr. Fuji, um, Tito Santana, Junkyard Dog. Yeah, Junkyard Dog. Those I remember for sure. But man, it's a long way to tell you going back like 40 years, man. Oh, man. <laughs> like, I, I don't remember. Man, I'm living this stuff, you know? Like, that's a great part, of, you know, about making these songs and stuff. And like with the Spinarak EP, it's like, digging into like the memory banks and creating like new you know creating a bunch of new stories too like that springboarded because i'm still reading comics and like comics you know you can read comics for adults and there's comics for kids and stuff so it's like just a, a continuous thing um you know comics and comics and, and hip-hop have been like these constants in my life so i feel like when people are like you still in the rap you still in the comics i'm like yeah why would i I never got out of them. It's like I've always loved. Why would I stop? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> being a part, you know, being involved with these things that I've always loved and that have always sort of been there for me, you know, like and yeah, during that the pandemic too, like going through old boxes and finding stuff. Like, yo, here's my here's my Black Moon tape, like and like and like you know, just old like you know, just finding these things I had in boxes and like digging out stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. You should go watch the WWF cartoon again and see, just can, see, if, see if you can find it. If I could find it, yeah. You know, thinking about what you just said, you know, um, I still like the same things I loved as a kid. I still love basketball. I still love wrestling. I still love hip hop. Not the way I used to. None of it's the same. Everything has changed. Hip hop has changed. Mainstream hip hop has changed. Basketball and NBA is totally different <laughs> from when I was a kid. Wrestling, totally different. It seems like all these things have kind of like sped up uh, in a way. And it's just, it's not necessarily made for me anymore. But I can still get some joy and entertainment out of it, you know? I, I haven't really changed that much in 40 years. <laughs> I like the same stuff. Well, you know, yeah, but, you know, you have changed a lot. You know, like, the same way basketball and wrestling have changed. Like, you know, yeah. you you grew up, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. think in 40 years ago you couldn't, you know, pay your bills. <laughs> you know? Like, That's true. That you know true. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Or, but or, it's, ten, or 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yesterday actually <laughs> yeah no, yeah no I mean, man it's uh it's true though yeah you're right i mean wrestling you you mentioned like H hogan in that era and like 
I remember really being in, like, I knew, like, I loved Hogan and stuff like that. My era of wrestling was a, just a bit after that, where like Razor Ramon and um, Steve Austin and like that whole. Is that considered the Attitude Era or what's the Attitude Era considered? Attitude Era was like 97, technically like 98 to like 2001, something like that. So Razor Ramon was not there. He was like before that. So that was like mm-hmm. the end, right? Because I remember that like. That was the new generation era. That's what that's called? Okay, the new generation. New generation yeah. yeah, yeah. We're There's like Bret Hart, Razor Ramon, Diesel, yeah. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. That era. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That was, that was a pocket that I was really into. And then, so his attitude era. So now I'm going to be like. I'm now I'm asking you questions because mm-hmm. <laughs> was that because everybody was like wearing like leather and like had their hair slicked back and they had like attitudes like the rock and stuff or was that just no what happened was uh WWE hired a writer named Vince Russo who was inspired by Jerry Springer <laughs> so he wrote the show in a Jerry Springer-esque way so it was more four letter words and half naked women and uh less about being a superhero like the Hogan warrior types, more about being the anti hero like Steve Austin, The Rock. Um, yeah, it was just uh more adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a more adult time and it lasted long after Vince Russo was gone. So, but he he kind of started it. Yeah. And see, for me, like, and maybe you too, like, that vibe of them being superheroes, like, it felt like those guys were, like, Hogan and Andre and Macho Man and all those guys, of course, they felt like they were just these bigger characters. And then you have Razor Ramon and Big Boss Man, Undertaker, like, all they were all, like, characters. Then everybody just started using their real names. <laughs> yeah. Well, not technically. Not though, really. But yeah. but no, but yeah. Um, I was not, you know, I've always watched WWFE, but I was never really a fan of it. Um, I liked the NWA, WCW. Oh, it, yeah. Sting I, and stuff, right? Yeah. I was more into that stuff. So it was always more reality based. Um more less about catering to kids mm-hmm. uh more blood and violence so i was into that stuff more so but i will i yeah. always watch w i still watch w um but yeah it, it took a turn in in the in the 90s because they were losing in the ratings to wcw they panicked yeah. and said we gotta we gotta do something and they yeah. made made it more adult and it worked yeah well, I remember NWO. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. It was that huge. Old WCW era. Yeah. And, uh, I just watched the Al Snow show on Netflix. Yeah. It was called it's Wrestlers. Really, really good. That was really good. Really yeah. good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Uh, that girl, Haley, Haley J. She yeah, came off to me. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I was watching it like this girl's going to be a star. She's good. She gets it. She yeah. gets it. I enjoy it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Wrestlers yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, dope show. Definitely. 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 You have a song called Letter to the Editor. It stood out to me because it feels like this kind of stuff only happens in super nerdy fields. <laughs> Why do you think fans are so passionate that they go beyond just being fans and try to critique and correct the art? I, it's because you care. Mm. I think when you're a fan, you get so passionate. And letter to the editor is, you know, the concept of the song is this comic book fan is writing his letter to the his favorite comic book and the people who make his comic, and he's got problems with the way they're handling his favorite character, and 
being a lifelong comic fan, I've read comics where I'm like, yo, Spider-Man wouldn't talk like this. This is and like that character is me. Like it's it's how I feel when I read a comic and I think like, oh man, I could write this comic better than these guys. They don't I've been reading this for the last 10 years. They, they don't know what they're doing. And maybe feel the same way with wrestling and you know with hip hop, right? Like, you know, you listen to your favorite rapper or whoever, and it's like, oh man, what are they doing on this album? Like, I think when we become passionate about things, we you know, you do, you live with it and you have your own experience with it. So if something happens that takes you outside, sometimes it's really difficult to, to handle and accept that they've just changed it. And we see it a lot now with obviously with the internet and people complaining about whatever it is, wrestling or Marvel movies or yeah, Andre's flute album, like people have opinions and they want, uh, you know, they want their voice to be heard. And with comic books, you could get your letter published in the back of Spider-Man or Batman. They would, And that was half the fun of reading a comic. At the end of the issue, you could read letters from other fans and the people who made the comic would respond to you. So getting a letter published in a comic was a huge deal because it was basically... Like if you could see your name in print in the back of the comic, like that was just like, wow, I'm a part of this, you know, and I used to write a lot of letters and I, I got a few published in some comics. I got a letter published in the source. Actually, um, I would write letters to comics and magazines, you know, and I would just like I would have like I would want to get my opinion heard. And so, of course, the song letter to the editor, it's like I've made up this fake comic and this fake comic character. And basically they have. It's a real thing where they would take a comic character and be like, oh, this comic's not selling very well. Uh, let's just change him up and let's make him like sexy or let's make them do this or kill all these people or like do all this like shocking stuff to get new readers to read the comic. And as a diehard fan, if you're reading this comic every month, then all of a sudden just because sales are down or they've got new people working in editorial and they just decide, no, nah, I'm going to just suddenly make this guy, you know, fall off a bridge and uh, then, you know, we got a whole new character who's this guy who's now Spider-Man and you're never going to, and the old Spider-Man is gone and blah, blah, blah. You got it. And it's like, what? <laughs> so, so yeah, call it fan rage, call it passion, call it, call it love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah. So I, I thought it would make for a fun song and um, yeah, I get to play the fan Billy who, you know, spoiler alert, it's basically me. Uh, uh, and then I got to play the editor who responds to Billy. And and that's fun, just taking on characters and channeling my, uh, you know, super rhymes. Remember that? Remember super yeah. rhymes and that, like, doing all the voices? I always liked that song. It was, like, rapping like Dracula and all these different voices. Well, he's, you know, I always thought that was fun. So, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now, did creating your own comic books strengthen or weaken your love for comics? Oh, I strengthen. Like I, I still read new comics every month. I'm writing. I'm writing a new comic now. Like I'm, I'm actually working on adapting my songs into comic. It's like doing short comic versions of the songs, uh, kind of like just a music video, except you know, without a music video budget, but I can, I don't need it. I can do anything I want in a comic, which is great, right? Like if you music video and you're like, all right, I need a hovercraft. I need like aliens. I need like crazy special effects. It's like, that's going to cost you $20,000, man. Like, like, oh, okay. But uh, we can just draw this comic and put whatever we want in it. The helicopter doesn't cost the same as drawing a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so um and just i love the medium of comics so my idea is that you can read along with the comic while listening to the song so that's what i'm working on right now and uh so i'll, I'll hit you up when that's when that's coming together because we're, we're, we're going to do like a kickstarter or something for it in the new year but uh but yeah no it's just working working in comics it's just, it's only like strengthened my love for it. Um, you know, 
um, you know, just like music, like the more I make music, the more I love it, the more like different things, you know, and that's when, you know, I think you really love something. It's like that when you can put up with all like the bull that it's like comes with anything, but like you keep doing it. It's like, you know, that's why, why I think some people just fall off and stop doing stuff because they just don't want to deal with the bull, the bull crap. Right. But then you get, you know, when you really love it and you just keep doing it, it's like, whatever, I'll just, that's just background noise. I'm just got to stay focused and do it. So, yeah. Comics are fun. Comics are great. Comics are better than they've ever been. You know, I, you know, I would say that about, you know, rap too. I think raps like there's a whole new, we're in a new era of like, of rap where I think the underground is really getting strong again. And like mainstream, I mean, forget mainstream, whatever, but you're seeing like with this whole 50th anniversary of hip hop and stuff, like even I was just listening to that 200 rapper K Slay song. Did you hear that? I refuse to listen to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not listening to that. Oh, because it's not like an <laughs> I'm not hour listening long. to an hour long song. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm not doing I went that. back. I kept coming. I, I okay. listened to like 15 minutes and come back. Um, Big Daddy Kane actually owns it. I think he he might be he's probably the top five guys on that track. Like, you know, just talking about like the, the old school rappers and stuff, but like hearing, you know, seeing, I think this with this 50th hip hop anniversary, you're seeing these old pioneers and like, you know, I don't even want to call them old, but like the, like, you know, Melly Mel, Chuck D, like Kane, like all these guys coming back and they're like, okay, there's like a fire seems to be ignited again. Um, Cause Kane killed it on the ver. He's like, this isn't this isn't 200 rappers on a track it's a big daddy kane song featuring 199 rappers <laughs> you know that was like one of the lines totally i totally messed it up like i didn't do the rhyme but but you get it i was like oh man you just kane's got it man but uh yeah no surprise anyway. there no yeah, surprise there okay you 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 made me i want to go listen to it now you can yeah <laughs> you know what somebody whoever if you find it on YouTube, someone added in uh, the time code and everybody on it. So you can just skip to whoever. And like Mike Geronimo is on there. Remember him? Yeah. Like Mike Geronimo was like, man, I haven't heard that guy in forever. And Keith, cool Keith kills it. Like some guys really pop off on it. You're like, yo, this is, this is great to hear. And a few people you are just kind of like, man, this is just completely forgettable. But yeah. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking, an hour long song, but if, if anyone just sits and listens to the same beat for an hour. <laughs> okay, what do you want people to take away from the spinner rack? Well, it's free on Bandcamp. You can go download it for free. Name your price, zero dollars. I challenge you to go give it a listen, even if you don't know anything about comics or cartoons or toys, because it's just me keeping it real. This is like my life experiences of a love of comics with over dope beats and uh you know i think the rhymes are pretty decent if i do say so myself and it's conceptual um and i just want people to take away some fun uh maybe it's a little different than some other albums you might have listened to recently and uh but at its core i think it's just a really solid ep about cool stuff you know i like to rap about things i like you know, I put myself through rap school working at a comic store. So what are you surprised by my content for? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Word Burglar. Thank you for joining the real hip hop dot com. My pleasure as always, man. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, man. Peace. Peace. Wait, what? What? Dear editor, this is the first time I've written a letter, sir. I'm Billy, a big fan, but now also a questioner. I love your comic, and that's why behind the curtain I can no longer sit quietly and let this worsen. Flag persons, a special character I've admired my entire life.